Welcome to Financial Investing Radio, where you'll learn the secrets for consistent, high probability returns in the financial markets for additional income to change your life. Grant applies consistent, high probability trading systems for the financial markets. He's only recently started sharing these tried and true market secrets. As a gift to listeners, Grant is offering his Roadmap to High Probability Financial Control. Go to FinancialInvestingRadio.com and download yours today. Now, here's your host and trading veteran, Grant Larson. Hey everybody, this is Grant. Welcome to another episode of Financial Investing Radio. So recently I interacted with someone who had created an ICO, an initial coin offering. Uh, of course, this is in the cryptocurrency world. Uh, to me, it's fascinating to see these digital currencies come to life, right, with these communities that spring up around those. You know, I started to think, though, I'm wondering, you know, wondering to myself, you know, would I really put my capital to work in one of those startup instruments. Now to do so, of course, each of us need to think long and hard, right, about each opportunity and, and what the allocation of risk in our portfolio is if we do something like that. So I'm not gonna say do it or don't do it, but you know, let's say that perhaps you had a diversified investment strategy where you had a sliver of funds that you could allocate to higher risk investments. Like I said, I'm not going to say do this or don't, but each of us certainly have to make our own choices. But as I reviewed my own portfolio, I thought it'd be great to have an alternative that was in a regulated market, but was impacted or correlated to cryptocurrencies. In a recent uh, podcast that I'd done, I talked about what are the correlations, right? We looked at certain uh, instruments that might be correlated. We looked at some indexes, some ETFs in the stock market and so forth. It, at, a, at an overarching level, there wasn't a lot of correlation. However, there are companies today, of course, as you know, that are investing in crypto in one way or another. And so the stocks of some of those companies are traded on the NYSE or on the NASDAQ or, or others. So in my analysis, I have a list of companies that I use that have sufficient liquidity that I watch. And so I wanted to walk through those today and uh, I call this my short, short list. In other words, I have a long list of crypto related stocks and I watch them, but not all of them are tradable. Some of them are informational only, right? There's certain indexes or even certain companies that you're keeping an eye on. But what you're looking for is understanding how they're behaving and how they behave related to other stocks that are in the crypto space as well. So anyway, I was looking through this and I have my own short, short list. And here's some, not all of them, but here's some of those on my short, short list. I'm not saying to short them. This is on my small, small list. Say it that way of uh, stocks that are you know traded in regulated markets but they have tight connections to either bitcoin or to other cryptocurrency uh technologies that are going on out there all right some of these will be no surprise to you if you're watching this space at all first one amd right no surprise certainly right certainly this is a, a semiconductor right they're a chip provider company and of course they're used by crypto exchanges traders and miners and as you know if you've been watching AMD since April of this year, it's just been on this super steep bullish run. I'm not saying to jump on it. In fact, I'd say, oh, it's a little overextended. You're going to want to you know, let that pull back into some technical support area before you jump onto that. Anyway, AMD is certainly one of those. Um, let's look at the next one. FCFS. Now, this is a payday storefront right these are the pawn folks right and what they're poised for doing is potentially bringing crypto to the masses right where crypto um, investment or using uh, crypto related uh, currencies for conducting transactions could be then made available to people uh, pretty easily now whether or not you agree with their business model i'm not here to to support that or say go against that what i am saying though is that there's a large customer base now, right now, though, the FCFS stock trades with less than a million uh, shares in volume. So you might experience slippage. I personally stay away from those. Even though I watch this one, 
It's not one I jump into because it's just not liquid enough, right? There's just not enough liquidity. However, it is a lot more liquid than some of the other things that are out there. So keep an eye on, on that one. All right, let's look at the next one. FNJN. So this is Finjen Holdings. Now they're a cyber security company and certainly their technologies are needed by crypto as well as non-crypto organizations. Being that these are digital assets that we're talking about, Finjen Holdings is certainly one and of course there are other cyber security stocks you want to keep an eye on and watch for those. Here's another one again. Again, this is not going to be a surprise to you at all. NVDA, uh, NVIDIA, okay, NVDA, NVIDIA. Like AMD, also another semiconductor chip provider, obviously used by crypto exchanges, traders, miners. They have been in a bullish trend for several years. Now, they went through a little bit of consolidation, but a week ago or so, I'm not looking at the chart at the moment, but a week ago or so, they popped out of the 270 level. Like, let me bring that chart up right here. Yeah, it was, let me look at the actual date. It was about a week or so ago, NVIDIA popped out of a consolidation range. What day was that? That was August uh, 23rd. Bam! Hit the top and then shot back up out of it. Just made a recent high. NVIDIA continuing to make a lot of, uh, a lot of movement up. Here's another one that I really like to watch, and that's Riot, R-I-O-T. Of course, they're invested in Bitcoin mining operations, right? They, what they do is they've just got a slew, a slew of racks and racks and racks of very high-powered machines that are doing a lot of mining of Bitcoins. Uh, they, of course, are leveraging blockchain technology, and they're, they're taking their skills, and they're selling those into then uh, payment companies, right, financial uh, payment companies, etc. They have a lot of stock options for trading and a ton of liquidity. So that's a very interesting one to watch. So when you think about it, you go, well, you know, maybe I don't want to actually go do the actual coin itself, but I could use options on this and put a lot less into it and take advantage of some high leverage moves. So that's a very interesting one uh, to trade. Now, the thing that's interesting about Riot is that it's price action closely aligns with Bitcoin price movement. So, you know, you can keep an eye on both and look for signals. I'll talk about signals here in a few moments. And then the last one that I'll mention is, of course, Square, SQ, right? They're a, they're a financial services organization, right, that provides mobile payments. The thing that's interesting, if you've been watching the news on this, this came out a little bit ago, but Square's cash app allows users to, to trade Bitcoin. And uh, its stock is incredibly liquid, right? Over 9 million uh, shares are traded uh, just about daily, right? So currently, what's interesting about this one is its stock is super extended, man. Square is, uh, at least in my opinion, it's just way high. I mean, if you come and take a look at this right here, I mean, the RSI is up to 80 if you watch that stuff at all. It's just super extended. If you're going to trade this one, I'd say, be careful. Look for some technical pullbacks before you do it. But the point is, those that list of stocks that I just walked through, this is AMD, FCFS, FNJN, NVDA, RIOT, and SQ. Those, what is that, seven or eight um, stocks have this tight correlation with activities that are going on in cryptocurrency action. And so the, you know, the value of this, I believe, is that you still get to participate in some of the action and volatility, what's going on in crypto, but with, you know, you're still doing it in a regulated market. Now, there are other stocks, certainly, that have invested in blockchain technology and so forth, as well as in Bitcoin itself. And they've, they've got one of several problems. One is now, again, I'm just talking about as it relates to, uh, to blockchain or, or crypto. One is uh, sometimes a liquidity issue. So you want to stay away from that. You're going to get a lot of slippage, and that will obviously hurt you. The second is that sometimes there's just not sufficient uh, relative portfolio investment from that organization in the technology. What do I mean by that? Well, let me take IBM, for example. So IBM is definitely invested in blockchain technology. However, there's so much incumbency and in other technologies there, it's difficult to draw a stock price action correlation directly to blockchain or Bitcoin, right? So you wouldn't necessarily trade it uh, from that perspective. Whereas the ones that I went through, 
uh, you know, there's a much higher correlation between activities going on with Bitcoin and blockchain and the activities of those specific stocks. It's a higher correlation anyway. All right, now I wanted to shift gears and talk for a moment about finding a signal. So, uh, so let's say that we wanted to find a signal. Can I do that using technical analysis skills that you already have? And the answer is yes. So I want to look at, at an example here to illustrate. So I'm first going to, I'm just going to grab Riot, R-I-O-T. If you brought up a chart on Riot and just look closely at it, right, what you're going to see is a couple key things here. One is a, a little trading rule that I use, especially around tracking blockchain price. Now again, uh, Riot and blockchain's price action uh, is fairly similar. And, and stocks, of course, move in different ways, right? They have different personalities. So the little rule that I'm going to throw out here doesn't apply to all stocks, all right? But it applies to this particular price action for this particular instrument. So I call it 8055, right? Those are three numbers. Eight, I should say, not 80. <laughs> Eight, and then 50, and then five. And it's pretty simple. All right, so if you're looking at Riot, what you want to first make a decision on is if I was going to use technical analysis, I first want to know where the price of Riot is relative to the eight moving average. There you go. That's pretty simple. So that's the eight part of the equation. All right. The second part of the equation is you're looking for the position of the RSI, whether or not it's above or below the 50 line. That's pretty simple. So eight for the moving average. 50 for the RSI. So in other words, if I was looking for something to go long on Riot, where I might, you know, I might play an options uh, trade in a, in a bullish position, I would first need Riot's uh, price to be closed above the eight moving average, and I'd need to be, I need to have the RSI on it above the 50 line. Okay, that tells me that there's uh, some momentum. Now, what you're looking for is when you make these kinds of trades, you're looking for location, momentum, and probability, right? So you need those three things. So, so the first one was location. Location is the eight moving average. The second is momentum, which is RSI is giving us a visibility into momentum. And then the last one is around probability. Now, probability, the way, one, well, there's multiple ways, right? But one of the ways to go after probability if you're going to make this kind of trade is you need to understand the level of participation in the market. And one of the ways to do that is to look at how many of the bigger players are involved. And there's multiple ways to do that. So I've developed my own indicators to help me do that. And so I call it TM2. And TM2 needs to have a score of either, uh, you know, less than, a, a, you know, negative five or greater than a five. That's not going to mean a lot to you. What's important is, you know, if it sounds like jumbled noise, you can reach out to me and I'll be happy to explain. But look at least for these three. Okay, look for eight on the moving average. Look for 50 for the RSI. And then look for a lot of probabilities, okay? And the probabilities can be examined through level of participation in the larger players uh, that, you know, that, that's involved with the stock at that point, all right? If you have an indication where you can see that there are bigger players involved and there's a lot more that I need to go through to discuss on the, on the TM2 probability score. Having said that, you can, you can reduce your bad trades uh, a lot just by those first two numbers, 8 and 50. Again, if you're interested in learning more about the TM2 probability score, let me know. I'll be happy to take you through that. If you look at just those first two that I'd mentioned, the 8 and the 50, if you were looking at Riot right now, you'd see trading signals on June 11th, on July 23rd, on August 13th, and now here we are. What are you? We are at the beginning of September, September 3rd. You got another opportunity here coming up. It's getting poised for a bullish signal. It's not quite there yet. The, the RSI and the, uh, the uh, eight moving average are lined up. We're looking for a higher probability of participation to join up. We'll see if that happens. All right, take a look. All right, everybody, thanks for joining. And until next time, look for signals on your crypto stocks. Thank you for joining Grant on Financial Investing Radio. Remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Don't forget to download your free roadmap to high probability financial control before you make an investment decision. Visit financialinvestingradio.com now.